Hi, and welcome to this video about event tracing for Windows or ETW. This will be an introductory video to what ETW is and showing you some tools you can use to explore ETW further. So first, what is ETW? ETW was introduced in Windows 2000 and Microsoft needed something like this because Windows was starting to get more and more complex, more things moving within the operating system. So it was very difficult in the NT4 days to know what is going on. How long does the thread context switch take, for example? Or what is consuming lots of CPU time? Or why is this thread waiting and what is it waiting on and why that takes so long? So Microsoft decided to create an event tracing and logging mechanism in Windows 2000 to be low overhead and very high performance, essentially meaning that even if you have thousands of events per second being generated by ETW, it should have negligible effect over the performance of the entire operating system. That was the idea. And so we have these traces and one of the benefits of ETW besides the performance issue is that we have semantics there. It's not just about getting out some numbers or some text. For example, you might be familiar with performance counters. Performance counters is yet another mechanism that allows us to see what's going on, but this is only about numbers, but not everything can be measured using numbers. So ETW is actually much more flexible than that and has semantics and in fact schema. So we have events which have properties, which have types. It's actually a very rich mechanism. And these traces can be recorded and then persisted into a file or just consumed by a real-time consumer, or both in fact. One of the benefits of ETW is that they're system-wide. It means it's not about a particular process, one or another, it's always a system-wide facility. This has the benefit of capturing everything that's going on, because sometimes you may suspect a certain process of certain behavior, but you're not sure. And if you're not sure, you want to get everything and then just filter what you need. On the flip side, if you do know the process you're interested in, maybe one or two processes of interest, there's no way to filter that out up front. You have to record everything and then filter out during analysis. And there are many providers provided by Windows out of the box and you can create your own providers if you so desire. In fact, many applications that are installed on Windows, uh, such as IIS or SQL Server or Oracle, they provide their own ETW providers. And just to get a sense of how many are registered on the system, you can run Logman Query Providers and see that there are more than 1,000 providers out of the box provided by Windows, each has a bunch of events and each event has a bunch of properties. In fact, some providers are really big. So here's a general idea of how that works, at least from a high level perspective. What we have is providers. So providers are the ones generating events. A provider can be a kernel component like the kernel itself or a kernel driver, could be a Windows service, could be some application, any entity really, any piece of code can generate ETW events. Now these events are interesting to certain clients or certain subscribers. In order to control ETW sessions, we have these controller entities. We're just using certain APIs to manipulate sessions. So a session aggregates a bunch of providers and buffers. So in fact, the fact that ETW is very efficient is due to buffers. It buffers things or events using non-page pool, kernels non-page pool, and then uh, from time to time just passes that to the final destination which could be some subscriber which could be a file or could be a real-time consumer. So controllers know how to build these sessions. They can create a session, associate uh, providers with sessions, uh, set parameters such as buffers, file name if, if applicable and so on, and then use a start or stop API to actually start running these things and start capturing these events. If no one listens to a provider, then the events essentially are not generated and just go down the drain, so to speak.
And so the target of, of these events at the end of the day is either a file, usually, usually with an ETL extension for a variant uh, trace log, which you then can open using various tools, or could be a real-time consumer or both. In fact, there are many products, usually in the security space, that use ETW with real-time consumption, so they're they know what's going on. The downside here is that ETW is, because of the buffering, could be delivered about one to three seconds after the actual event happened, which in some cases might be too late for certain, uh, for certain subscribers, such as in the security space. But ETW wasn't really created for security purposes, but it is often used in that space uh, as well. So how do you use ETW? There are various tools. Some of them are built into Windows, like Logman, which allows you to look at providers, also start and stop sessions and set providers. And this is a command line tool. There's also a trace report tool that allows you to convert this ETL, which is a binary format, into something that is humanly readable, such as a CSV file, which you can then open in some um, editor or uh, Excel. And then there's the Windows Performance Toolkit, which you can install as part of the Windows SDK or Windows Driver Kit, that has additional tools like Xperf, which is a more powerful command line tool to create and manipulate ETW sessions, it's still command line. And then there's also WPR, Windows Performance Recorder, which allows you to record sessions. It has a UI version, which is very, uh, very easy to use and very comfortable to use. I'll hopefully demonstrate that in a future video. And then to analyze that, you need to use tools as well. And using something like Excel, using a CSV, that's nice, but in most cases this is not good enough because usually the sheer amount of information you get using ETW is so vast that you need more powerful tools than just looking at a, a million lines of rows in some table, that's probably not going to cut it. So Windows Performance Analyzer is a very powerful but non-trivial tool you can use to analyze ETL files, analyze these recordings that you're doing. And again, I'll hopefully demonstrate this tool uh, in a future video. And then there are other tools like Perview. Perview is a Microsoft uh, free tool that uh, works with ETW as well as some other aspects uh, that it has. And it ge it's geared mostly towards .NET. So it has a good understanding of .NET. So if you're trying to troubleshoot .NET stuff, Perview could be your tool. Then there's TraceView, which is a tool coming with the Windows driver kit, which allows you to open an ETL file and see it in a tabular format. Very similar to what uh, converting to CSV will essentially give you, but it can also capture stuff at, at real time uh, as well. And then there's EW Explorer, which is my own tool that allows you to explore schemas of providers that register their schema with the system. And I'll show you uh, examples of that uh, very soon. So let's look at some uh, details here. So here's my ETW Explorer tool. This is a free tool you can download from my uh, ETW Explorer repository in GitHub. And uh, what it does, it allows you to browse all the registered providers, do some searching. So for example, I'm going to do something like a process here to, uh, to look for something that has the name process somewhere. And so you can see there's a Microsoft Windows kernel process provider. Every provider is identified with the name, but really the GUID is the thing that um, is really the differentiating aspect of providers. And then I can click OK and this reads the metadata for this provider. You can see that this provider has 40 events. So if I go ahead to the events tab, I can see these 40 events. And each one of these events, if I click one, I can see the properties for that event. These are kind of the fields, if you will, and the type of each one of these fields. This is what I expect to find if I connect myself to this kind of provider. So you can see here process start v2 event indicating a process starting and you can see the session, the image name and other details that you get using this provider. There's a process stop indicating a process has terminated for some reason and again some details about that as well. And there's some other stuff like image load and IO priority changes and process being frozen then this is uh, something that happens with ULP applications a lot like calculator and so on. You have job stuff and, and so on. This is what we get with this provider. If I want, I can look for something else. So for example, let's look uh, at some other kernel related stuff. So to speak, here's a kernel file. Let's just 
check that out. So you can see here we have 43 events. And again, we can see stuff like creating of a file object, a cleanup, read, write, things like that. We see lots of details we can get essentially for free. We just get that. The only thing we need to do is to register for that. Okay, so let's look at other examples. Let's start, take another kernel thingy here. Um, maybe something related to the network, why not? So here we have 22 events and you can see the various events. Now the problem with all that is that most of these providers are not really documented. So you might just search for something that looks promising but you have no way of knowing whether you actually find something that is truly uh, promising. So maybe something with Defender. Here's Windows Defender. Defender itself has 74 events in fact. That's lots of events. And even though they're not uh, given any uh, nice names like uh, task uh, with some number, it's not really re re revealing, but still you might want to look that up and, and try to figure out what these things mean by doing some research and seeing what's happening when certain operations occur on the system. So that's something that could be useful, this tool for exploring schemas that are available on the system. Now how do you see things related to performance um, and ETW. So first we have here this tool called Performance Monitor. If I open that up or simply search for performance, it actually shows a node called Performance here. It's not truly the Performance Monitor. Performance Monitor is actually this particular tool which is the one showing performance counters which is not really what we're interested in here. But if you go to Data Collector Sets, you see there's something here called Event Trace Sessions. This is in fact a list of all the ETW sessions currently existing on my system. Them. Some of them are running and some of them may be stopped, but in this case, all of them are running. And if you have admin privileges, you can definitely stop each one of these sessions if you so desire. So if I open that up, I can go to the properties by right clicking. We can see the properties of every session, like which providers are associated with this session, some properties of these providers, whether the session is in real time mode or a file uh, or both and we can even change things if we have admin privileges. And I would recommend not stopping any of these sessions because some applications or components or services might depend on them being alive. So we have some of those already been created by various processes, but now we can also create our own. So you can right click here, or go to user define and right click, we can see there's a new data collector set we can create here. So let me call that my uh, set, not very imaginative, but let's go with that anyway. And let's use create manually here. And now I can go ahead and add stuff like performance counters and things like that. But in fact, I want to do something that focuses on ETW. So let's go with event trace session, right click here. And this will actually uh, understand that we're actually interested in ETW only. We're not interested in um, in other things like performance counters. And here I can select providers. Let me go ahead and look at these providers. It's actually generating the same list uh, essentially that you see in the, uh, in the tool that I've shown you earlier, EW Explorer. So if we go to Microsoft, the Windows, uh, kernel something, let's go with that process thing, see what we can find with that. So it's not very easy to, uh, to work through that. There's no filtering here, it's a bit annoying. But if you know what you're looking for, you can find it. And of course, you can select more than one provider, as many as you like, in fact. And then we can go ahead and select the directory where we'd like the file to be written, because that's going to be the default. I'm going to change that to CTEMP to make it easier to find. And then you can go ahead and even start that immediately once we close this dialog box. So now if we look at event trace sessions, we can see that my set here is exactly here. It's running. You can go to its properties. We can see that there's a single provider here, but you can actually change that by adding or removing providers. You can see the properties of the session, like the file, it's, uh, the fact that it's going to stream into a file. Here's the file itself. It's going to be called myset.etl and the session is currently running. So if I go ahead and do stuff like uh, launch applications, uh, here's a notepad, for example, I've just launched it for fun, maybe even close that. Let's say that this is enough. We can right click and stop the recording because we're interested to see what happened at that uh, interval of time where that my set was active, I can go to my ctemp directory. You can see there's an ETL file here waiting for me. So what I want to do now is to find a tool to use and I'm going to start with trace view. So let me uh, quickly uh, find trace view here. 
and I'm going to just uh, run it. So here's trace view, this is what that looks like. And uh, like I said, it's uh, coming from the Windows driver kit and it can record sessions real time, but can also open an existing file, which is going to do it right now. So I'm going to do open existing log file. I'm going to uh, browse to that file. So here's my set.etl here. Let's use open here and then just okay. Uh, that's fine. Let's go with auto here. We're not going to uh, try to figure out symbols at this point. And we can see the session opening up. Essentially, this is a static thing because we're just reading information from an existing file. So you can see here in a column-like view what has happened and when that happened. So here the name shows the provider name that generated that event. Here's the process ID when the event was generated, the thread ID, the CPU number that generated it. Um, so I have 32 processors on this mas machine, so it's 0 to 31. There is some uh, sequence number, which is not uh, important here, the time. And you can see the message, which in fact contains various properties here. Uh, so you can see stuff, uh, things that have happened. And we can go ahead and just scroll through this thing and see what happened. We even get some messages for some of these events, such as CPU priority of thread in process 4 was changed from this to that and so on. And you can see various other properties here. The uh, the output here is not super convenient, it's not the best tool for these kind of investigations, but it is an existing tool, so it's worth looking at uh, anyway. So you get a, a table-like view that shows the properties of each of these events. So these properties correspond to the same ones we've seen in EW Explorer based on that particular event that was generated for this particular entry. So you can see what happened here and, and even do some searching uh, in terms of what you perhaps expect to find, such as notepad starting and things like that. So we get various events, all of them are coming from this provider we've seen already. That's the process, kernel process provider right here. So one of these various events from here are the ones that actually are shown here using uh, trace view here, this particular tool. So this should give you a sense of what ETW looks like in a, in a simple sense at the very least. So here's another example just to give you a sense of what's going on. Many of you are probably familiar with the tool called Procmon or Process Monitor from CC Internals. This is what Procmon looks like and Procmon has, uh, has this capability to capture various events. You can see here, it captures events related to the file system, to the registry. You can see here, that's the file system and to network activity and also thread and process activity. So you can see stuff here. And the question is, how does uh, Procmon works? And the answer is it works mostly using a kernel driver. It's kernel drivers capturing or intercepting registry operations and file system operations, also thread and process operations, creation and destruction, uh, but, and also image loads, by the way. However, for network activity, it doesn't use its driver in a normal way. It uses various uh, events from the kernel provider. There's one provider called the kernel provider, which is kind of the main provider, or perhaps the most, uh, I would say, um, fundamental provider provided in Windows that generates network events, certain network events which are captured by the process monitor tool. And so the upside of using a driver is that you get the information as it happens in line while it is happening. So you get that in exactly the right time and there's no significant delay between the time the event is captured by the driver to the time that's actually being presented in the UI. On the other hand, with ETW, we have that delay of one to three seconds, typically until the event is actually being registered. It doesn't mean you're, you're missing anything. Nothing is going to be missed uh, unless your buffers are really small and the system is, is too the system is, is, is too busy to process your events, but in most cases that wouldn't be a problem. However, the downside is that there are limits to what you can do with the driver. Not every operation is possible to filter with the driver or to intercept with the driver. But with ETW you can see practically, I would say, almost everything, including memory operations and things like that. But Procmon doesn't go that route except for network activity, it goes the driver route. Now, I created another tool, which is called Process Monitor X. 
uh, version 2 and this uh, tool is about trying to do essentially the same thing as proc one but much more than that but using ETW only and so if I go ahead and try to configure stuff here I can conf configure things related to processors, to threads, to TCP activity, to registry just using one ETW provider which is in fact the kernel provider and there's some other stuff like uh, say memory and things like that and go ahead and just run these things and once I do that I start to get lots and lots of events that are happening in fact you can see at the bottom number of events that is generated is really huge and we can also get some information such as the properties we get from every event that's the same ones essentially you can view in EW Explorer for most providers and you can also resolve symbols and see call stack for certain cases and so uh, the Downside again is that there is uh, some delay until the event is generated or received by the tool but the upside is that you can see things that process monitor is unable to see such as things related to memory uh, allocation something that cannot be really intercepted um, not even by a driver so the only way to know about these kinds of things uh, in a normal system is by listening to ETW events and we can even go further and look at uh, images and files and in advance I can even uh, have stuff like looking at kernel pools and even when uh, objects get created and handles things like that it's really crazy the amount of information you can get using ETW so you can see there's lots and lots of stuff that is happening here in fact the problem here is how to analyze that stuff how to get uh, some kind of conclusions or things that you'd like uh, to, to understand from this particular recording in this case it's all in real time we can save that to a file we can copy that and so on but we get that in real time you can see number of events is now uh, crossing 5 million and uh, continuing in a rapid succession just because there's so much going on on a typical Windows system especially if you go to the little details like every time a handle gets opened and things like that these things are happening in tremendous amount so you can't really um, see everything that's going on and try to make sense of it but this is yet another tool to uh, show you how you can utilize ETW to see what's going on on the Windows system like I said this is all always system wide it's up to you to then filter stuff if you're looking for something specific it's up to you to make sense of what you see here uh, it's not something you're going to get uh, out of the box by, for, by ETW because it tries to be as lean as possible and be as performant as possible and so it, it can't add any kind of filtering to slow it down technically the APIs exist but there's no provider that actually provides any kind of filtering uh, in, in that regard but there are some filtering you can, you can use uh, for example to see only warning levels or error levels and things like that and uh, that's something you can do um, but in terms of the actual events or uh, focusing on certain processes this is not currently possible so hopefully you get some understanding of what ETW is and I hope to uh, continue talking about ETW in other videos showing you some more things you can do with these tools and other tools